um, to do their part of the ministry. Uh, so here uh, there's Acts 11, 12 given in our notes on page 15 where uh, the spirit told me to go with them doubting nothing. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me and we entered the man's house. This is Peter talking and Peter was um, instructed by God to go to a Gentile person's house. Yeah, otherwise, he would never have done that because Peter, as we see him, he is a very committed Jew and he would never take a step to go and minister to a Gentile person, but directed by the Holy Spirit, the kingdom is extending, right? So the kingdom is extending from the Jews to the Gentiles, uh, and then we know it will move on to uh, every other people group, just in line with what uh, Jesus had told his disciples. He said that when the Holy Spirit is uh, poured on you, you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. So basically, it's moving in that direction. Uh, but when it, did it begin from the Jews to the Gentiles? When Peter heeded the Holy Spirit's instruction and the Holy Spirit told him, there'll be uh, six men accompanying you. You just go with them. Don't ask any questions. And he was being directed by the Holy Spirit. So in the same way, whoever we are, in every capacity, it's important to be led by the Holy Spirit to do the kingdom work. Now, when we are doing kingdom work, the Holy Spirit will direct us to do the Father's will because that is what matters, right? We've seen that uh, in Matthew chapter 7, the way people uh, come to uh, God and say that, you know, Lord, Lord, we did this in your name, we did this, we did this in your name. But uh, God responds and says, I never knew you. Right? You didn't do, you, you didn't know me and therefore do my will, uh, but you just did something in my name. So we can do a lot of wonderful things in the name of God. Uh, but what is important in kingdom building is to do what God wants us to do. Okay? So that's what we must pick. Uh, otherwise, you know, uh, what we are doing can just be birthed out of our um, uh, imagination, it can be birthed outside of our relationship with God and that is not necessarily the will of the Father. So we must be careful whether it's a project or a program or ministries that we start that it comes from our relationship with God. So knowing God is important and when we know God uh, and you know we are having that walk with the Lord, then the Holy Spirit will direct us to do the works of the Father. And uh, invariably, as we do the works of the Father, we know that we will walk in uh, only through righteous ways. We will be able to accomplish it. We will be able to fulfill that work to which God has called us. Okay, so uh, it's important for us to do the will of the Father. Now, the Holy Spirit is the one who reveals the Father's will to us. While teaching about the Holy Spirit, uh, Jesus said, oh, the spirit of truth has come. He will guide you into all truth. So who will tell us about the Father's will? The Holy Spirit will uh, give us the specifics about moving into the Father's will. So he will hear from God and he will reveal it to us. And what is the additional thing that the Holy Spirit does? The Holy Spirit glorifies Jesus. So Jesus said that in John 16 and verse 14, he will glorify me. So the work of the Holy Spirit is to glorify Jesus. Uh, and that is the reason we must, uh, you know, not go by our own uh, intentions, but go by what we direct, what we hear the Holy Spirit tell us. Uh, and in that work, we can be sure that the Father is pleased. And also the name of Jesus is magnified, exalted, and glorified. As 
children of God, uh, we must be led by the Spirit of God. And, and that's what scriptures tell us, Romans 8, 14. For as many are, as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. So basically, you know, our hearts and our minds as uh, workers in God's kingdom must be directed by the Spirit of God. So we must be led by Him. We cannot do this, you know, like a uh, like a natural uh, exercise. It it will not. I mean, we could come up with something, but at the end of the day, uh, is that the Father's will? It's only the will of the Father which will please His heart, and that should be our heart's cry. God, I want to find out what You want me to do. And I want to do it. And when I do your will, I know that Jesus is glorified because uh, I have been led by the Holy Spirit. Now, here's the next thing. Uh, I said that the, the will of the Father, we will recognize what, when we are in right relationship with the Father. And when we're in right relationship with the Father, uh, you know, we are able to birth things from that relationship. We're able to birth the uh, the the dreams, the visions, we are able to birth the work that God wants to release on the earth. Okay? So uh, as kingdom builders and as God's people, we must make sure that we birth the works of the spirit and not the works of the flesh. Now, works of the flesh is another way of saying things that, you know, uh, are, are from our own understanding from our own desire okay we could birth those things and tag it and say hey this was god's will but you know between the father and us we know that this was actually not birthed through the spirit but it's a work of our flesh okay so uh, knowing that every time it's important for us to be birthing the works of the spirit uh, john 3 6 it says that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So only the work, what, um, only the work of the spirit right, uh, is to be released by us. Now, if we do something and that is the work of the flesh, it is, you know, it, it's uh, nearly impossible for the flesh to, I mean, it is impossible for the flesh to then be converted into the spirit okay it doesn't happen and that is why god is instructing us and in saying that the flesh will only give birth to flesh and the spirit will give birth to spirit so uh, our energy must be directed in giving birth to the works of the spirit now we also see in the old testament when god asked for uh, uh, moses to build the tabernacle and then you know make make different things for worship uh, he asked Moses to prepare the anointing oil and he gives him certain instructions that it must be prepared in this way and you know it, it must uh, be poured out on so and so and all of that. Now the anointing oil it's a type and a shadow of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So what instructions did God leave for Moses? This is in Exodus uh, 30 verses 22 to 33. I won't read the passage but I'll just tell you the uh, understanding that we get from there. So this anointing oil uh, was for objects which were used in the worship of God in the temple. So in the same way, even today, the Holy Spirit will only anoint our service for God. Okay. So when we birth in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is able to anoint that work. Secondly, whatever was consecrated in the temple through that anointing oil, um, uh, you know, it was set aside. Consecrated uh, means set aside. So that oil was actually setting things aside for the worship of God. So in the same way, you know, when, when uh, there is a work of God, God anoints it. And that work is dedicated to him. And that's how it's supposed to be. Thirdly, you know, uh, anything which was not meant for worship okay as instructed by god uh, moses was strictly told not to put the oil on uh, you know other things or even use it for like daily use so what does that tell us see god does not anoint the things of the flesh now we can come up with a lot of things and call it god but 
will the holy spirit anoint those works you know those those um uh, activities that we are calling as the work of god no god will not anoint the work that which is born of the flesh and god does not tolerate any imitation of the anointing because moses was also instructed and told look this is the uh, this is the way in which you must prepare the anointing oil and he was told don't use this preparation for anything else this is only for the anointing oil of the temple so today we can try to have imitations of the anointing you know something may seem like oh this is the anointing but if it is not the anointing then that's a dangerous position to be in because what are we doing we are we are um, you know uh, 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 it's like you're offending god by imitating the anointing okay and and that's very very dangerous god will not tolerate it and that's how he instructed moses then what is born of the flesh does not have the life and the presence of god okay uh, so it is basically like cut off from the goodness that the anointing brings the, the work of the flesh is cut off from the anointing okay uh, and therefore it does not produce what it is what anointing produces so life will not come out of it you know blessings will not come out of it it can look like the anointing but it's a work of the flesh okay so we must be careful as kingdom builders to give birth to the work of the spirit because that will be anointed by god all right so uh, what would you know i am sure all of you are thinking about examples and making this very very relevant uh, so for example uh, let's say uh, you know a service is going on okay and uh, initially like a couple of services uh, we felt that you know god was moving in in a certain way and and we were loud you know the preach was loud the worship was loud everything was loud and we could also see the spirit working in people's lives okay healings there was um, uh, you know different things happening in people's lives now after a few services maybe the holy spirit is working in a very different way okay and uh, uh, you know it, it's it's more of you know some stillness he's ministering in that manner but what if the worship team and the preacher try to imitate what experience they had uh, a couple of services ago just just trying to uh, make that up in the flesh right the holy spirit is not ministering in that manner but it has changed right now but you know we can we can cook up that excitement we can make it up right and hope that the anointing will be upon it and that people will be ministered to in the same way that this happened earlier however you know god will distance himself from something like that and say i'm not in this you're giving birth to the excitement out of what out of your flesh so i'm not obligated to pour my presence on it and this is not going to give birth to the life of the spirit okay so i'm just giving you uh, again a very simple example but you know, this can happen in so many ways we we can try to imitate the anointing uh, but so that is a very dangerous thing to do but we have to be led by the spirit be very very sensitive to how the spirit is leading us what work the spirit is calling us to do and god is only obligated to anoint what he is asking us to do what is birthed of the spirit but if there are things which are birthed of the flesh like for example if i feel oh i want to do this grand uh, project uh and you know it, it's going to bring me a lot of fame across the globe because uh, people want to see someone do you know a, a certain project okay um, bringing uh, relief to people and all of that now if that was birthed out of the spirit yes you know the god will bless it and life will flow out of it but if i'm doing it for popularity if i'm doing it to get the praises of men what is actually happening i'm birthing the work of the flesh okay so uh, the, this this is how it looks and and you know um, many times the person or the kingdom builder 
uh, is the only one who has an idea of what is going on and that is why we started with that first chapter where we said we must be true to god we, we must be true to ourselves so when we are true to god and ourselves you know we know hey what am i doing is this really what the father is asking me to do by the holy spirit or not now if i'm clear that the spirit is leading me in that direction you know i go ahead and i give birth to those things and that that project or that activity or that program and it brings a blessing to god but if i am doing a program as a competition to some other church in the city oh they are doing that program so what even we can do the program we can do it even better but is it the work of the spirit are you birthing it through the spirit are you birthing it by the flesh if it's my flesh that's crying out and saying yeah yeah we can handle it god is not obligated to anoint anything like that so the anointing and the presence of god cannot be expected when there is a work of the flesh in fact what is born of the flesh hinders what god desires to birth of the spirit and the good example there is that of abraham you know god wanted him to birth isaac but he birth ishmael now ishmael uh, you know he referred to as the work like when we talk about the work of, the uh, work of the flesh and the work of the spirit you know that comparison is made and we know in the case of abraham the conflict that came about between isaac and ishmael now bring that to our spiritual walk with the lord and kingdom building you know sometimes we get into trouble not because satan is after us okay it's not because of the enemy but it's because the work of the flesh is hindering the work of the spirit so we have some things of the spirit going on but we've also birthed things in the flesh now what is the work of the flesh doing to the work of the spirit you know it's trying to suck the energy out of the work of the spirit so we struggle in our own lives in our own ministries because we have also given birth to the work of the flesh and the work of the flesh is opposing and it is contrary to the work of the spirit so that is the reason you know, we must be very very careful okay very very careful uh, uh, in order for us to birth the works of the flesh again you know a simple example would be something like you know uh, there could be um, uh, there could be a certain opportunity which you strongly feel you shouldn't take up but maybe that opportunity will give you a bigger platform okay and uh, so you just take it up and you say yeah okay i sign up for it and then as you're doing it you realize you know maybe you're, you're lacking what uh, it takes in terms of the anointing the knowledge the preparation and all that uh, and and you're really struggling but you're doing it because of recognition and, and and things like that and as you're walking with the lord you know god wants you to to um, step out in other ways and you know god is leading you to do those things so you also birth the work of the spirit while you're working on that what god has led you to do you realize half your energy is going off in the work of the flesh which you already started and you can't stop it right so there is a conflict going on there you don't have enough time you don't have enough uh, you know energy you don't have enough resources and you know there's this whole tug of war going on between god what god is actually asking you to do and something that you have started off in the flesh so uh, that way we must be careful to only birth the work of the flesh because many times the work sorry work of the spirit because many times the work of the flesh uh, is what will oppose the work of the spirit in our lives then uh, when something is born of the flesh it will not produce any benefit um, john 663 it is the spirit who gives life and the flesh profits nothing so when you know something is of the flesh i gave you that uh, whole example of uh, mm, you know uh, uh, in the service right just for a feel good experience we we do it a certain way right but the anointing of god is not on it then you can't expect the benefits that come by the anointing you know lives being touched um uh, people experiencing the supernatural power of god healing taking place miracles taking place like it could look like something that the spirit had done earlier but it lacks the power okay 
So uh, that's when we must be careful. The work of the flesh will never give us the benefit of the the spirit or the blessings that come by what the spirit has to offer us. And you know, God will test the work that uh, is done because we are told in Scripture that you know, one day uh, whether it is uh, wood, hay, uh, straw, our work will be judged, and we we must make sure that we are building the work of the spirit. And, and uh, whatever we, we are putting our lives into, that it, it will stay on and that it will glorify God. So as a kingdom, kingdom builder, our desire must be to do the will of the Father and our desire must be to um, uh, give birth to the work of the Spirit. So how to give birth to the work of the Spirit? We are able to do this when we walk in the spirit okay to walk in the spirit is to simply live moment by moment led by the holy spirit and be completely yielded to him now we know that um, you know the work will the the flesh will oppose it but in the last uh, session here he said you know we crucify the flesh we have to die to ourselves and when we surrender to the holy spirit in that way and we grow in it Right? We will be able to uh, bring forth the things that God wants us to bring forth. And uh, talking about yieldedness uh, is also talking about brokenness. Okay, Brokenness simply means depending on God, complete dependence on God. Now we come to a place where we realize that God, at the end of the day, we are just earthen vessels. And your spirit needs to fill us and your anointing has to cover us. Because if that doesn't happen... Right, uh, whatever we do, it will not produce the results which only the anointing can produce. We can have the appearance of ministry, but there will be no fruit. So, for a kingdom builder to yield to what the spirit is leading us to do, it's crucial. Okay, and yielding to it means us being submitted. And completely dependent. God, only if you lead me, can I even go in that direction. And I know that if I move in line with what you are showing me, you will bless it. And your name will be glorified. But God, if you don't do it, you know the way Moses said, if you don't go uh, uh, before us, then God, you know, we cannot move. So we have to come to that place in serving God where we are so dependent on God and we are led by God. And always check the motives of our hearts, you know, ask questions like, what is motivating me in the work of the ministry? I gave you one example. You know, we, can, we can get caught up because this is the information generation. Uh, we, we have um, everything out there, right, on social media. If uh, a certain kind of worship uh, is, is uh, happening, it's out there. Uh, the worship teams are using a certain style of music. They, they are doing the videos in a certain way. You know, what prevents us from doing the same thing? We can also do it. So why are you producing a worship album? That's the question. Now, if the answer to that is what Galatians 5 says, you know, the works of the flesh are hatred, contention, jealousy, anger, selfish ambition, dissension, heresy, envy, and similar things. If one of these is the answer to say that, hey, you know, in, in competition to this particular church, we want to put up a worship album, then that's a work of the flesh, right? But if we are led by the spirit and, you know, here's a song that the spirit gave us and we know that if we produce this album, it would be a blessing to the people in this nation, and you know, different countries of the world. And then we go ahead and do it. You've answered that question what motivates you correctly right so in that way from time to time we have to ask ourselves why am i doing this what is motivating me to do this okay uh, go into full time ministry why do i want to do it okay so we should have the right answer for that and that answer should be in the spirit leading us and us being yielded in a place of brokenness before god but if the answer is the works of the flesh any any one from that category, you know, it will not produce the result that the spirit will produce. 
So keep asking yourself this question: Why? What motivates me? Why am I doing this? And once it be, you know, we are motivated uh, by righteousness, peace, joy. We are motivated by uh, blessing others, right? Edifying others. Uh, people should be built up, uh, and uh, God's name must be glorified. We can also ask the question: You know, um, who is glorified in this? Now, what if you do what God is calling you to do, and you never get rec recognized for it? Are you okay to do it? If the answer is yes, seek the glory of God, and so you know, just go ahead and do that because that's the work of the Spirit. So, uh, be led by the Spirit and always give birth to the works of the Spirit. So, how does the Holy Spirit guide us and lead us to do His work? Um, you know, we will we will look at the uh, Book of Acts to learn a little bit about this, and it's really interesting because the Holy Spirit, the way He directed uh, people, believers then, uh, He never sometimes He never gave them details. For example, in Acts eight twenty nine, uh, the Holy Spirit tells Philip, "Go near and overtake this chariot." So we all know there was an Ethiopian eunuch in the chariot. And uh, Philip was only told to overtake the chariot. You know, it's like saying uh, here in our uh, city we have uh, autos, auto rickshaws. Okay, I don't know how many of your countries have auto rickshaws, but you know we have auto rickshaws. Maybe we're just going in an auto rickshaw, and then you 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 feel like okay, um, maybe we should go a little faster and kind of you know uh, catch up with that next auto rickshaw. And the Holy Spirit is just telling you that much, and you don't know anything more than that. Right, but you follow that instruction. You just catch up with that next auto rickshaw. So in that manner, you know, Philip is being directed: go and overtake this chariot, and that's all the instruction. But you know, we talked till now about being led by the Spirit, yielding or surrendering, submitting to what the Spirit is saying. Philip did that, and little did he know that he will get an opportunity to minister to somebody who is reading the book of Isaiah, not understanding about the Messiah. So he explained it, and this person accepted Christ, and Philip also baptized this uh, Ethiopian eunuch. But we know that you know, the Ethiopian eunuch was the connection, right, of the the revival that was taking place in the Book of Acts to the to the continent of Africa. Now Philip didn't have the background for what God was doing, but he followed the simple instruction: go. overtake the chariot so in this way you see so many instructions in in uh, god's word and um, right here in acts you no know, peter i i told us about how he was sent to cornelius's house okay? uh, he was told there will be three men seeking you arise therefore go down go with them doubting nothing for i have sent them and peter didn't understand that the gospel is moving into um the lives of the gentiles for the first time and you know peter was he was a very very um proud jew he is the last person you would imagine to preach to the gentiles but he followed the instruction of the holy spirit and so you know this chapter says holy spirit the director so if you you know looking at this from a higher level we follow these small instructions but the holy spirit is directing the kingdom work of god okay uh, and in in uh, in this case philip because of him the gospel went to africa peter followed what the holy spirit was saying and the gospel went to the gentiles right uh, so all these amazing things happened because people were ready to yield to the instructions sometimes very short instructions you know earlier it was just go overtake the chariot but in the case of peter it was slightly longer there'll be men waiting for you doubt, go doubting nothing so a longer instruction so uh the key is to listen to the instruction whether it's a short or a long instruction and you find that the holy spirit directed the ministers of god the apostles to take the gospel outside of jerusalem so in acts 13 you have um paul and barnabas the holy spirit instructed the people to set aside so in verse 
when they were fasting, they were ministering, praying, um, you know, setting time aside for the Lord, the Holy Spirit said, now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So who is giving the instruction? The Holy Spirit is directing the work. So what's going to happen from now? You know, that Acts 1 8, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. So now the gospel is actually beginning to move in that direction or to the ends of the earth. How? Because Paul and Barnabas, you know, are being called out by the Holy Spirit on a mission work. Okay. So the Holy Spirit has that plan with him and he knows where to direct people, who to instruct, when to direct them. So we have to depend on the direction of the Holy Spirit. And if you know, uh, all of us, we, we uh, belong to the kingdom and, you know, we are all in different parts of the world uh, right now, different parts of this country. Uh, but then, you know, we are all part of the kingdom. As we are following the instructions of the Holy Spirit, it's like a grand design, right? And the, the kingdom work somehow in synchrony, in harmony, uh, in, in an amazing way it's going on. And who is doing that work of extending the kingdom through us? It's the work of the Holy Spirit. And we are just yielding to the instructions of the Holy Spirit. So he's, you see here in the book of Acts, how beautifully uh, the Holy Spirit is directing his people. And, you know, churches are planted. Uh, many, uh, many, uh, uh, you know, fellow workers are raised up by, by Paul, by Barnabas, by, you know, the other apostles. And the work of, of the kingdom is being done in a powerful way. And uh, the Holy Spirit you know, takes complete charge, uh, telling them all the details, you know, when to go, where to go, who to talk to, when to release people into the work of the ministry. And, uh, you know, it's just beautiful to see the way things are orchestrated. Now, even while uh, Paul and team are traveling, you, know, you notice that the Holy Spirit has a way of saying go. And also telling us, don't go. It's not yet time. So uh, in at 16, you find you know, Paul is passionate. He wants the gospel to go all over the place. Uh, and he, in fact, wanted to take it to Asia. Okay. Uh, and he's ready to go to Asia. But the Holy Spirit prevents him. So at 16, verse 6, uh, it says, Now when they had gone through uh, Phrygia and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. So Based on this, can we say that God did not want the word to go out to Asia? Not at all. Because the Great Commission is about taking the gospel to the ends of the earth. But the timing, right? the timing was not uh, as God wanted it. And that is the reason the Holy Spirit prevented Paul from going into the region of Asia at this point. But we know later on the gospel did go to Asia. But instead of Asia... No, Paul had a dream and uh, he had he saw this Macedonian uh, man who stood and pleaded for Paul to come and he followed that dream. So who gave him the dream? Right? We, we say uh, sometimes, you know, it, it said that dreams and visions are the language of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit was speaking, ministering to Paul and he responded to that call and he was directed to Macedonia you know, and the work of God was established in Macedonia. So being directed by the Holy Spirit, being led by the Holy Spirit, being instructed by the Holy Spirit, that's something that we see here in the book of Acts. Uh, and you know, in this manner, God's kingdom was established. So just want to encourage us that you know, we uh, also must be led by the Holy Spirit and given to the direction of the Holy Spirit for kingdom building. And he will lead us. You know, Romans 8, 16, it says the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So the Holy Spirit is prompting us. He is uh, you know, telling us what we must do and how we must do it. Okay? So we can be led by him. So thank you. Uh, you know, there's some questions here on the chat. They, but the page numbers, but thank you, Abhi and Samuel, for posting that. Yes, we're on page 21. So how does the Holy Spirit speak? Um, well, this is uh, actually more about hearing, how to hear from God. So we know that, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit may uh, quicken a word from scripture. 
uh, or you know we could we could have an impression in our spirit that this is what we need to do uh, or that could be uh, a flash of information in our spirit right something that that we suddenly know that knowledge comes into our spirit um, and uh, also you know a, a deep sense of peace that okay this is what god wants us to do uh, we could also get pictures right pictures or ideas that god gives us and that way we we um, hear from the holy spirit it could be through a prophecy dreams visions could be a physical manifestation in other ways so this is uh, more for your understanding the prophetic class uh, but then you know it, it's it's uh, fine to know the various ways in which the holy spirit speaks to us now uh, in what we we talked about till now there was a sentence that came into philip's spirit go overtake the chariot and he followed that okay uh, there was there were a couple of sentences that peter received go doubting nothing there'll be these men waiting for you you go ahead but paul had a dream right he he, he had a dream he had a vision where the macedonian man was calling him and he yielded to that dream so these are all different ways in which the holy spirit will minister to our heart so what what we are basically saying is hear what the spirit is saying pick it up and move in that direction okay uh, and uh, that will lead you in the will of the father what god really wants us to do uh, and how to receive from the holy spirit um, of course we must maintain a relationship with the holy spirit have that unbroken connection with the holy spirit uh, the way dr cho uh, talks about it right so koinonia fellowship with the holy spirit and that's when the holy spirit is able to uh, birth these things in our spirit uh, and a uh, couple of a uh, couple of uh, practical things for us to hear from the holy spirit it, it's good to um be strong in the word okay meditate in the word so many a times the instructions of the holy spirit come to us from the word of god as we are reading the word of god you know it's something really hits you okay and you know that uh, this is what god is asking us to do okay just a moment um, Okay. Okay. So, uh, Luke twenty one and verse fifteen. Okay. So, this is one uh, scripture. Yeah. So, this was uh, like the first time ever that, uh, like, pastor said, "Can you preach?" Right at that time, um, I I had never preached. I never preached. But I like I. came back home and i was thinking okay god do you really want me to preach okay and i don't recommend uh, uh, you know just flipping the bible open and all but for whatever reason on uh, that evening i was desperate and i was like god i really want you to speak to me uh, and then one of the scriptures that that my uh, that you know caught my eye is uh, luke 21:15 where which says for i will give you the speech and the wisdom right that none have that your adversaries they will not be able to stand before you it's in a different context but still somehow that scripture hit me that day and gave me the courage that along with a couple of other scriptures of course when i meditated later uh, in a correct way uh, that god directed me through the word of god so you know the word of god is key for us when we spend time in the word of god the word of god uh, it, through that the holy spirit will speak to us the other important thing for us to maintain is a sense of calmness okay calmness or um, we would say to come to an undisturbed place in the presence of god and this is something that we can practice 
because um, when when we want to hear from the holy spirit or when we want to move in the gifts of the spirit uh, it's very very important for us to be in a place where we are sensitive to what the holy spirit is saying or what the holy spirit is doing so if we are all um, you know uh, it, it's like a if it's like a storm within us we're not able to come to a a, a place of calmness even if the holy spirit is saying something to us you know we may actually miss it so maintaining in koinonia fellowship with the holy spirit these are the things that help so i'm just giving us some keys one is depend on the word of god and through the word of god you know, he will instruct you he will tell you okay this is what i want you to do maintain a sense of peace and calmness because in that way as you're walking in peace you will be able to hear the voice of the spirit more clearly uh, and to to um, walk with a heart of purity Yeah, because uh, scriptures say that those who are pure in heart will see God. So the revelation that God has for us, you know, when we maintain that clear conscience, we maintain that pure heart, we are able to receive God's revelation, and we are able to step out and do things for the kingdom of God. And walking in love, walking in love is another key that uh, helps us to hear from God and step out uh, with the instructions of God. okay um and as we're talking about um kingdom building and being directed by the holy spirit uh you know we must also keep in mind that sometimes god can tell us things way ahead of when that's actually going to happen okay uh, through a prophetic word it could happen through a prophetic word or it could happen through a dream and you already know that you know uh, in in a couple of years you will be in a certain place doing ministry like this uh but we depend on the spirit again to discern the right timing okay and uh, whenever that right time um you know in that right time we step out but why does the holy spirit reveal we are ahead of time to us so that we have you know space for preparation preparation in terms of skills preparation in terms of our heart preparation in terms of you know our spiritual walk with the lord so god allows for all that by letting us know well ahead of time that uh, uh, you know something is coming up and uh, okay so uh, what i'll do is i won't uh, rush through because there's uh, you know some more stuff here in our notes but uh, let's just come back here to the chat section and see if there are any questions uh rose says pastor does being born from born out from the spirit includes that god shows in visions and dreams or impressions through his word but out of the secret place with god so yes rose you know that's what we are saying um anyone who is born again we can receive the impressions from god but of course we we know that when we are baptized in the holy spirit right when we are baptized in the holy spirit that opens up for us the work of the spirit in a in a in a mighty way so you know from there uh, the gifts of the spirit begin to manifest through our lives uh, and you know dreams visions at another level altogether so if we are born again yes to some extent we we can be led by the spirit but we are empowered by the spirit when we are baptized in the holy spirit so uh, that is necessary that is necessary for us to move powerfully with god so any other any other uh, questions or comments before we close today with regard to the holy spirit directing us okay so uh, yeah i think uh, it would be good for us to just kind of go back to what we've discussed today and uh, also if possible the other sections here and then if you have any questions we can discuss that in the next class and take it from there oh okay anita has a question <coughs> how to be sensitive to the holy spirit's voice so uh anita this is about um, 
our communion with the Holy Spirit again, and I, I've already mentioned, uh, we can maintain that communion in many ways. One thing that we discuss is being in the Word of God. Okay, so when we spend time in the Word of God, we kind of become familiar uh, with the voice of the Spirit because the Holy Spirit will not tell us to do something which is not in agreement with Jesus, who is the Word. Because the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all in agreement. So we can spend time in the Word. That will make us sensitive to the Holy Spirit. We can take time to pray in the Spirit. In fact, that is what uh, is there in the next uh, section here in, in chapter 3. So the Holy, when we pray in the Holy Spirit, right? when we pray in tongues, uh, that also brings revelation to our spirit. Okay, So that is something you and I can practice a lot. And that will also make it easier for us to pick up what the Holy Spirit is saying. And the third thing, I think, is that sense of peace or calmness. Uh, and I know that all of us are busy. Uh, you know, the, the life is so busy. There is work. There is family. Right? There's, there's so many things that are happening at the same time. However, so carving out time to just settle your heart in the presence of God and say, God, what are you saying? What do you want me to do? It's very, very important. So setting that time aside for God will also help you become more sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Now, in addition to that personal time with God, throughout the day, throughout the day, you know, we, can, we can still be hearing and saying, okay, God, what are you saying? What would you want me to do? Um, you know, what would you want me to share? Right? In, maybe you have an opportunity to minister God's word. Okay, which scripture do you want me to speak from? So basically, you're constantly in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And what are you doing? That way, you're training yourself. You're training your spirit man to hear from God. Okay? Because the communication uh, uh, of the Holy Spirit comes to our spirit. We say deep cries out to deep. So the spirit-to-spirit -spirit communication is what takes place between the Holy Spirit and our spirit. So our spirit uh, can be, in a sense, trained to pick up the voice of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So does that help, Anita? Just a few pointers there, but there's so much more. Okay, great. Thank you. Yes. And Rose uh, says, Pastor, I think also being faithful to finding time for God consistently and just communing with him. He rewards our faithfulness and he will reveal, reveal himself. Yes, true, Rose. Yeah, yeah. So having that consistent time with God also really helps us. Yes. All right. So, uh, uh, yes, we will stop at this and uh, pick up from where we stopped in the next class. Uh, I would just like to request someone to pray and close for today. Beulah, are you, are you okay to pray? Mm, yes, Pastor. Yeah, yeah, please. Most gracious and loving Heavenly Father. Father, we want to thank you at this time, Father, for this time of learning about your kingdom. Lord, has you spoke, Jesus, about Martha and Mary, Lord. Lord, I just pray the focus that you were talking about in that incident, Lord, ask, like, telling that Mary was the one who was seated at your feet and learning, oh God. We just pray that we'll be able to take that posture, oh God, at this time to learn, oh Lord, of the things that you are teaching us, Lord. And we just pray at this time, Lord, that this is all about focus, Lord, where we are taking our eyes off ourselves and the things that we want to accomplish in our own flesh, and the things that we want to do, Lord. But Lord, we just pray, let it everything, oh God, that you want, Lord, to be done in us and through us be done, oh Lord. Let it be the work of your spirit. Let it be birth, oh God, from your spirit alone, oh God. Help us also to discern at this point of time, oh God, Lord, what is of the flesh and what is coming of the spirit, oh God. And help us to lead a, a life of surrender, Lord, and uh, total commitment, Lord, being loyal to you, being sub submissive, Lord God, to the spirit of the Lord and to the Lordship of Jesus, and to be able to accomplish all that you have planned and purposed for each one of us. So we thank you, Lord. We commit ourselves into your hands, into this uh, time of learning, O oh God. 
so we'll be able to learn and be able to fulfill all that you have in store for us we thank you father in the name of your son the lord jesus christ we pray amen 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 thank you bula and uh, thank you everyone for being part thank of the you, class Pastor. thank you god bless you and uh, see you next week in this course but this week for another course okay so bye for now bye amen god bless Thank you ma'am. Thank you, thank you. Bye.